We asked you, our wonderful YouTube audience, if you think Haas should sell to Andretti in Formula One. And it's fair to say the results were emphatic. You can see them on the screen. Scott, you've seen the results as well. What do you think? Yeah, ab absolutely spot on. I think the, the the caveat I'd have is that if uh, if Gene Haas's view of his F1 team changes and the way that Haas goes about its business in F1 changes over the next, say, 12 months, then I think it's absolutely right that it stays on the grid and Gene shouldn't be forced to sell. But if I'm looking at what I think the Haas F1 team is right now and what I think an Andretti General Motors works team with its own engine could be in a few years' time, if you're asking me objectively what would I rather see in Formula 1, I've, I've, I've swung towards Andretti and General Motors. I like the way you said you swung as if like maybe you were on the fence beforehand. One of the key reasons we're asking this question is, yes, Andretti has been approved by the FIA as an 11th team, but we're still expecting F1 itself to say, no, you're not welcome. So we're kind of looking for a way to get Michael Andretti on the grid here. Perhaps that's a bit unfair on Haas. I feel in the interest of balance, we should look at kind of the counter arguments here. The obvious one is who on earth are we to tell Gene what to do with his team? We'll get back to that a bit later. But one counter argument I saw when I posted about this on social media was why would Gene Haas get rid of the team when for him it's printing money? Is that a fair characterization of how valuable this team is to its owner? <sighs> Only Gene really knows the answer to that. And he's actually... He's never particularly public about what he personally or his team or his company rather, Haas Automation, gets out of being in, in Formula 1. Probably because it wouldn't look very good on him to sit there and say that, yes, I'm very happy for my team to hang around at the back of the grid and, and be un, uncompetitive because I'm raking it in. He's probably never going to admit that. But I would I would suggest, strongly suggest actually, that, that Haas gets a lot out of F1 at, at the moment just by existing because... Gene doesn't put any of his money into it now. He doesn't want to put substantial amounts of his own money into it. We know that he told Gunter Steiner during the COVID-19 pandemic, basically, find another way to keep this team going or I'll pull the plug because I'm not funding it anymore. And that's what led to the Nikita Mazepin, Ural Kali deal, Mick Schumacher coming on, on board. And um, even now that we're through into a, a better era for F1 and, and Haas is one of the teams benefiting from that with better prize fund distribution and a cost cap, keeping costs down for other teams who can't outspend them. If you've got things like the money ground deal has come in, that's what's propping Haas up. It's not it's not Gene's money. So he's certainly not losing. He's not spending or losing any money by by being in F1. Whether it's printing money or not, I think I'd have to see his bank account to, to tell you that. <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed you haven't looked it up already. That, that's the preparation. He's a billionaire, he so maybe you wouldn't even notice if it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, imagine being that rich. Now, we have heard from Gene Haas since the Gunter Steiner news broke. He spoke to Lawrence Barreto, our old colleague and friend of FormulaOne.com, and he addressed a few points. One of the big points of tension, we think, around the Steiner departure was, of course, this idea that Gunter wanted this, this more investment. He wanted Gene to it, pr presumably put his hand in his own pocket and just give Haas that little bit extra to get after the other teams they're fighting with that are investing. Gene addressed this and he says that Haas does spend enough money. He said they're very close to actually the, the F1 cost cap limit. And his view, and this is where he disagreed with Steiner, was that actually Haas could do more with what its re, uh, resources and infrastructure are already. So is that fair? It, is it right to actually say they don't need to spend more? Because if they're close to the cost cap, they're clearly running at a decent level for current F1. Uh, I think if you've got actual uh, ambition is fine. Ambition is very good. We should applaud it. And if he wants the team, to and be he does say he wants is. the team to go forward. You know, we we've sometimes characterised him, haven't we? As like you said, just being happy to exist. He was emphatic. That's not what this is about. It yes, that and and that is that is fair and and that's fine. And that if that is sincerely his position, I think it's held within a bit of a misunderstanding of what his team is, where it is, and the F one ecosystem. It exists in, I, I get the impression sometimes with the way that Gene talks about stuff like that, that he's kind of stuck in the, the early days of the F1 team when it was punching above its weight and fighting for top five positions in the Constructors' Championship and so close a couple of times to grabbing unlikely podium finishes. Those days are long gone, not just because Steiner led the team into this downward trajectory, but I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll do a quick fire, quick fire quiz with you, Glenn. 
if 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 all ten teams maximise their potential, is Haas beating Red Bull? <laughs> Absolutely not. That's an easy is one. It, is it beating Mercedes? No. Ferrari? No. McLaren? No. Aston Martin, Alpine, no. an Audi Works team, even a second Red Bull team based on the Red Bull ca- campus. Can, uh, Williams, with all of its money, Williams has got so much money and support from its owners, Doralton, that it's been lobbying massively hard because it's got a load of money it wants to spend on capital expenditure projects that, that it can't now. Honestly, why should Haas, the smallest team in F1, with a, with a slightly limited facility in the UK, a technical dependency... And a strange setup. Yeah, really, really strange. That technical dependency on Ferrari and the office that it has there, a factory in the US or office building in the US that doesn't really get used for any anything meaningful. Why should that team be better than the other nine teams in Formula One? I, I ask you, play devil's advocate, be Gene's best friend. Should If every team gets the most out of their potential, why is Haas anything other than 10th? Well, I can I can give you an answer. I'll give you what I think is <clears throat> Gene's answer because he mentioned this as well. You talked about the Ferrari dependency I think he sees that as their their golden ticket. He thinks if we've got so... Haas takes everything it can, everything it's allowed to in the F1 rules from Ferrari. And he said himself, he thinks they should be closer to Ferrari than they are. So I assume that's his logic here. He's going, we are, we've got kind of half a Ferrari and then we do our own bits around it. We don't need to be a big team. We don't need a massive factory and infrastructure like all these, all of our rivals because... We get a load of stuff from one of the giants. I just, in that case, then Gene doesn't understand what F1's about and he doesn't understand the importance of aerodynamics because the one thing you can't take from Ferrari is the aero. You have to do all your aero yourself and clearly that is a limitation with that structure across Banbury, Maranello, stuff being done at Delara as well. Like, Gene clearly doesn't understand where the actual performance comes from. The Ferrari, the Ferrari deal gives Haas a good cut price foundation for a competent Formula 1 team. But a competent Formula 1 team doesn't have to finish better than 10th. It can finish 10th in the championship and snipe for the odd point. I think that's fairly competent in a in a, in, in this era of F1 where there are no there's no low-hanging fruit anymore. Sauber's not facing oblivion. Um, Williams isn't facing uh, oblivion. McLaren aren't colossally underachieving anymore. Uh, all, all, all of that just isn't what it was when Haas first entered F1. And this model but also, made so much sense. nobody's cut adrift, are they? There's, there's not a bunch of backmarkers. We were talking about that group of teams at the back that were battling for, what was it, seventh last season? They're only, what, a second? A second and a bit off the pace? Like, F1 is as competitive as it's ever been from front to back. I, I think there is serious potential here for Gene Haas and maybe some people who who blame Steiner for not kicking on with this team in the last few years and being so almost marooned at the back with the exception of that step forward in 2022. I think there is a misunderstanding of what how competitive Haas was, relatively speaking, in 2023. They were not an absolutely embarrassing last. They were a just off the back of everybody else last overall. But they still had a car that could qualify in the top 10 on its best days. What they couldn't do is race strongly on Sundays. That has been a that has been an Achilles heel in some form or, or another for pretty much this team's entire existence. And again, I think that all comes back to error understanding and competence. And when you have the smallest team in the most restricted setup, what else do you expect than to have the, the weakest organisation technically overall? Final point then... The the jumping off point for this discussion was our poll about should he sell to Michael Andretti. He has addressed the question of a sale as well. And not only did he rule out a full sale, but he's not even interested in selling a stake to it to investors, as we've seen a lot of other teams do. So is that the end of this discussion then? Do, uh, do we believe him? Uh, I don't think it's the end of the discussion for two reasons. One... He would say we're that. not going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if he's uh, if he's any got any interest in selling, he's not broadcasting that to the world. F1 is a seller's market at the moment, and he's not going to drive down the price of his asset by saying, "Oh, please, someone take this off my hands." You and never then... want to look like a motivated seller. <clears throat> no, no, especially when the market's in your favour. Um, and then the other element is he. It's not the end of it because this might be his view now, but I'd be. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not his view at the end of the season because while I think this version of Haas might might work for him, even though he doesn't want it to be uncompetitive, it still works for him by 
being uncompetitive by dint of just ticking over because it's washing its own face. It's got some nice deals that are taking it relatively close to the cost cap and being able to be respectable, as we said, a respectable last even without Gene having to put his hand into his own pocket anymore. But I seriously believe one of the reasons for that was Gunter Steiner, the, who is basically Hass's or was Hass's most marketable asset with his Netflix drive to survive fame. That team wasn't doing anything on track of note, anything off track of note, except for Steiner. So Haas might not want to sell because he thinks the team's really valuable and is in a good place at the moment, but I think their most valuable assets just walked out the door.